increasing desperation and decreasing awareness of the world around him, Rush Limbaugh speeds inexorably towards career self-destruction. There may be some politicians and some advertisers happy to be associated with undeniable racism, but the ones who aren't will probably let this be known one contract non-renewal and one repudiation at a time. Our third story on the countdown, Limbaugh compares the Supreme Court nominee to a housekeeper and offers her a vacuum cleaner. Meantime, the American public, comfortably ahead of this nonsense, views her more favorably than other recent Supreme Court nominees. Boss Limbaugh in a tizzy because Judge Sonia Sotomayor revealed in documents provided to a Senate Judiciary Committee that she is a member of a professional organization for women called the Belizean Grove. Limbaugh wondered how liberals would have reacted if recent male Supreme Court nominees had been part of an all-male club. Would they have forgiven the judge's involvement in an old boys club? Or would they have erupted in a full-flown five-alarm rage? Safe to say any conservative in this situation would find their nomination dead in the water, clubbed like a baby seal, no question about it. I think I'm going to send Sotomayor and her club a bunch of vacuum cleaners to help them clean up after their meetings. Parenthetically, do you think uh, Rush is invested in a teleprompter and really doesn't know how to use it yet? Meantime, the judge continues to meet with senators, and like recent Supreme Court candidates before her, she has avoided offering her positions on hot-button issues like abortion and individual gun rights, other than to say she respects precedent. The public is largely behind her, nonetheless, among respondents who say they know enough to offer an opinion. 43% uh, support her, either strongly or somewhat. 20% oppose her, either strongly or somewhat. And her support number exceeds that of Justice Samuel Alito and Chief Justice John Roberts at about the same time in their own nominations. Let's turn now to the Associate Professor of Politics and African American Studies at Princeton University, Melissa Harris Lacewell. Good evening. Pleasure to see you in person. Yeah, nice to be here. And let's get this one thing out of the way. What is the difference between Judge Sotomayor's membership in this uh, all-female professional association and some hypothetical judge in an old boys uh, club like it would have been 30 years ago known as the Supreme Court? Yeah, well, I was going to say, actually, the Supreme Court still <laughs> is a, an old boys club in many ways. Mm -hmm. I mean, the first Supreme Court um, was seated in 1790. Um, between that and 2009, there have been exactly two African-American men and two white women. Um, and over those uh, years, they've made decisions on slavery, right. immigration, gun rights, every important thing that governs who we are as a democracy. So I think the real anxiety, the real issue that is emerging here is this sense of how dare a woman of color imagine herself part of a group that will make decisions not just about women, mm -hmm. not just about people of color, but about everyone in the country. It's a real question of citizenship. And also this idea of being a member of a club um, or an organization dedicated to professionals in a field who represent a group that has been in some way discriminated against, harassed. Um, very few men over the years have had some sort of economic a situation where they were paid less for the same work that some woman was doing down the street. There is still some sort of compensatory part of society that when you equate an all-men's club and an all-women's club, it doesn't make any sense unless you deliberately leave it out of the equation. Well, certainly. I mean, it, it's a kind of uh, flatness that the right likes to mm -hmm. do so that we can talk about it as though it's all fairness, all identity groups. But maybe Limbaugh hasn't noticed that, for example, there are very powerful Republican women's groups. Mm -hmm. um, Republican women are some of the most organized political women in the country. They get together with just other Republican women and talk about Republican women things all the time. I mentioned this with the vacuum cleaner line. Uh, this is quite Quite serious. 28 years ago, and the way the story was told to me by a witness, the great comedian Paul Lind, who was on the Hollywood Squares and towards the end of his career and, in fact, the end of his life, made a joke that involved uh, uh, minority women and cleaning ladies was the phrase that was still in use then. And the producers stormed out of the control room, stopped the taping, fired him on the spot, and ordered that uh, entire series of shows erased. He was fired out of work, essentially the end of his career at that point. Why is that not happening here? Is there, is there something more important about 1981 Hollywood Squares than 2009 political discourse on the radio? Well, maybe, but I got to say, as a tenured professor uh -huh. who says outrageous things on Twitter usually 10 times a day, I'm, I'm sort of pleased that we can't just be fired for saying <laughs> even completely outrageous and awful things. Mm -hmm. I'll also say that I think the big key is not so much what Limbaugh utters, but how we react as a public. When I teach lynching to my students, um, the most interesting part of the lynching photographs is that everyone is standing there and facing the camera, perfectly proud to be part right. of this. What's exciting about Limbaugh's outbursts is that 
white men with television shows say <laughs> things like, this is completely appalling. Let's bring a young black woman on to talk about how appalling it is. So everything is not okay, yeah. but we are in a fundamentally different place. And the fact that so much of the American populace rejects it is, for me, part of what we ought to be focusing yeah, on. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a thick old tree, and it takes a long time to cut them down, especially if there's a forest full of them. Yes, and when the Senate is apologizing for slavery on the same yes. day, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's progress. It's not the end point. Mm -hmm. but it's progress in an important way. Amen. Melissa Harris-Lacewell of Princeton University, thanks for coming in. Yeah.